Now, let's get back to the energy crisis and what's happening in Canberra later in the week. And Susan McDonald joins us now from Brisbane. She's the Shadow Resources Minister. Thanks for joining us, uh, Susan. Uh, you must be just uh, enraptured about the prospect of flying down to Canberra later in the week. One last visit to the nation's capital when you were thought you were back in your home state uh, for the summer. I don't think anybody's looking forward to going back to Canberra on Thursday, but but worse, we're not looking forward to uh, to going back to signing Australia's uh, the the death knell of Australia's prosperity. I think this is, is a, a shocking piece of legislation. Is it necessary? Is it necessary for the expense and carbon dioxide dioxide emissions for everyone to get back to Canberra? Well, we know that this is a rushed legislation announced on Friday. They're trying to jam it through the Parliament the following Thursday. There is so little detail. Uh, I hear Jim Chalmers saying that a vote against this is a vote against reduced electricity prices. Well, that's just not true. How would we possibly know that when there has been no detail given? Uh, the energy, the uh, electricity providers don't have lists of who the vulnerable low-income people are. Uh, so how are they going to deliver these measures? But I think the really th clear thing that we need to understand is that this Thursday we'll be able to look back and say that was the day that Australia's prosperity came to an end. We are a resources nation. We rely on the royalties and company taxes and the well-paid salaries the uh, operational and, and capital investments that flow through to small businesses regionally right across Australia, that's what makes us able to enjoy the NDIS, to spend money on hospitals and schools, great roads, right, sure. to be the first world country that we are. All right. Uh, mm. we, we know that the left of politics, Labor and the Greens, for a long while and right up to the current time, demonised the coal industry and the gas industry. We know they've tried to obstruct them from from um, exploration and from development. Indeed, they've had Liberal governments sometimes trying to do the same. So we understand all that. This is an industry that's under siege. But, and this is a big but, there are high global prices. The vast majority of the gas and coal extracted in this country is exported. So can they not afford to sell their coal and gas domestically at a much lower price? Well, I think what you'll find is that domestic investment uh, is going to dry up because there is now such massive uncertainty around what the Australian government will do next. I have never seen price fixing work anywhere in the world. It's such a communist regime uh, to introduce price fixing. We know that domestically, uh, because this, this is not being imposed on export markets, domestically it's going to result in gas uh, shortages, gas rationing, uh, and, worse still, it's going to result in less investment in gas uh, going forward. So we might get a short-term sugar hit of, of some dollars flowing around, but we certainly will not get the long-term investment into supply that will mean that Australia does have the more affordable electricity that we'd hoped for. You reckon this is a communist move? I don't think there's any other description for it. Price fixing is a policy that has not worked anywhere in the world. Places that have tried it, like Argentina, end, ended up having to subsidise gas producers to come back to the market to be able to produce and extract their own resources. Uh, this is going to be a failed, a failed policy, and it's not just me saying it. Investment analysis analysts right around the country uh, are saying that this is a bad decision. This is going to result in bad outcomes for Australia. And, uh, and I do. I think that when, when the lights go out next year, people will be able to thank Labor for this decision. I think they'll be going out. I've been saying that for many, many years. And the way to uh, reduce those mm. prices normally would be to boost supply, but everyone seems to be against boosting the supply of coal and, and gas. So we're in for some tough decisions in the months and years to come. Thanks for joining us, Susan. Thanks, Chris. Susan McDonald there, who's the Shadow Resources Minister.